A while back, I talked about the 1979 film version of Sumika Yamamoto's Aim for the Ace, directed by Osamu Dezaki. Interestingly enough, Dezaki also directed a movie version of what's not only perhaps the most iconic sports anime manga of all time, but easily one of the biggest cornerstones of Japanese media. And that is Ashita no Jo. But before I continue, I'd love to give a special shout out to Patreon supporter No Actual Content for commissioning this video. Ashita no Joe, or Tomorrow's Joe, or Champion Joe, or funny enough, Rocky Joe in Italy, or just Joe in France, was a manga written by Asao Takamori with art by Tetsuya Chiba, published in Weekly Shonen Magazine by Kodansha from 1968 to 1973. Which makes the Rocky comparisons more interesting, as that movie didn't come out until three years after the manga ended. The story was about a drifter named Joe Yabuki who comes across a boxing trainer before getting arrested for fraud. While in jail, Joe meets a professional boxer named Toru Rikishi and forms a rivalry with him. Right before the release, Joe and Toru promise one another that their paths will cross as professional boxers. Ashita no Joe is very beloved and celebrated for not only its memorable characters, interactions, and boxing matches, but at its core, it's a story about how people who are much less fortunate than others still have the strength and will to rise up in the world and set an example for others. The manga would receive an anime adaptation from 1970 to 71 directed by Dezaki, plus a sequel from 1980 to 81. On top of that, there were a couple of live-action adaptations and a spin-off series called Megalobox. But for this video, I'll be talking about the first compilation film from 1980, which, while Dezaki was the chief director, Yorichiro Fukuda is also credited. This compilation film, released here as Tomorrow's Joe, is an abridgment of the first anime, mainly released to fill audiences in on what they missed out on, as the sequel anime, Ashita no Joe 2, was on its way. But as a compilation movie from 1980, how does it stack up? Well, obviously it's not like the Aim for the Ace movie or the Fist of the North Star movie in that they were made from scratch, but this movie actually does quite a very good job telling a cohesive story. Now, I must emphasize, I haven't gotten around to reading the original manga or watching the original anime yet, but I do imagine those are a lot more expansive in terms of material. Though I was quite satisfied with how the story was told, in the sense that despite being a string of TV episodes stitched together, it really didn't feel like that. And for a 1970 anime that was repackaged in 1980 as a movie, the animation, while limited at times, is actually quite nice, as every scene is drawn with care in a way to build suspense and emotion, while also adding an edge whenever there's a boxing match with jagged lines and fast-paced action. And while the manga is fondly remembered for its characters, I'm glad they were able to make a good transition here, as everyone is very distinct in terms of personality, mannerisms, and character design. Joe Yabuki, voiced by Teruhiko Aoi, is a very laid-back and likable, compelling protagonist who's very chill. Plus, his name being Joe kind of tells us that, in a way, he's just like us, the audience. A person with goals and ambition, and that he is willing to do anything to succeed, even if it means getting his face smashed in repeatedly. His coach Danpei Tange, voiced by Juke Fujioka, is also a lovable support for Joe, who's almost similar to him in how he's another one who's less fortunate, but is clearly older and wiser. We also have Joe's friend Nishi the Giant, voiced by Toku Nishio, who's just the dude all around. He's almost like a brother type of character to Joe, and honestly, that's amazing. Aside from them, there's Yoko Shiraki, voiced by Kazuko Nishizawa, who in a way kind of acts as a pseudo-audience surrogate as she is able to connect with Joe and Toru in what they go through. And that brings us to Toru Rikishi, voiced by Shusei Nakamura, and he is easily the big show stealer of Ashino Joe, at least in this movie. He is just rich with charisma, always donning a smile on his face, and is almost seen as a god of boxing. While Rikishi may be over his head at times, there's no doubt that his strength and dedication is enough to be admirable at first. But there's a dark tragedy to Rikishi's character that I'm not gonna spoil for y'all's sake. Trust me, it's better if you watch it for yourself. Also, I really like the music in this film. Kunihiko Suzuki does an excellent job giving each scene a flair of personality with lots of variety, just making the film a fun time through and through. I especially love the music that plays during training montages. I mean, who doesn't love a good training montage? Underneath all of this, Tomorrow's Joe has plenty of emotional scenes that'll resonate with you. 
Without spoiling too much, the final match between Joe and Toru is easily one of the most powerful moments I've seen in animation. Again, without saying much, what makes Ashino Joe so compelling is how it displays our potential to become greater. But at the same time, it also shows what can happen if we place our ambitions before ourselves and the sacrifices and consequences that can come with it. But even with that, we can still learn from the mistakes of either our own or others, so that way we can still use our gifts and talents to lift each other up and become the best we can strive towards. And with that said, damn, I should really watch the anime or read the manga sometime, because this stuff is gold. Definitely check out Tomorrow's Joe if you haven't. You can actually watch it for free on Retro Crush. And the English dub is a little funny at times. You can tell Director Otaka to set up the match with Okani as he pleases. Because if he's worried about losing his best bet for the championship, tell him Joe Yabuki is gonna cost him two of his best champions. But what do you guys think? Have you seen Ashtono Joe? What are your favorite sports and a manga? Go ahead and comment below, and I want to give a very special shout out to my channel members and my supporters on Patreon. So if you like what you see, then consider supporting the channel with the link in the description, where for at least a single dollar you can get access to my Discord server. And you can also unlock other perks like early access to videos and exclusive content. Also, I want to give a shout out to Eric Guzda for joining the Patreon. Feel free to like, share, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff, and this is Titan Goji, signing off. You know, I I just realized that you can use Ashtono Joe as a setup for some sort of joke, if you will. Uh, you know, say you're uh, having a conversation with someone about some of your favorite anime, and uh, you're 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 just like, oh, uh, uh, I really like Joe, <laughs> and you know, they ask, huh, what's Joe? And you just hit him with the Ashtono Joe Mama. Oh shit, you guys are still here. The video is over. Uh, bye.